Hey guys, Professor O'Kane here. Today we're going to check out one of the most musical, ferocious and inventive head cutting sessions I've ever seen on video. Usually when we see two guitar players on stage both soloing, it's just a contest to see who's is bigger but this departs from that sort of thing so much so there's so much cool stuff here and the more I've listened to it and I'm sure you're gonna find the same thing is that the solos are actually very very connected it's truly amazing the kind of connection and telepathy that these guys have of course both of these players don't need an introduction Joe Bonamassa and Eric Gales are at the top of the blues food chain. Each of them in their own right have amazing attributes and there's really so much to learn from them. So let's face dive right into it right now. Okay guys, so we're gonna hear Red House in the key of B and something to look out for right at the top is that the two of them are able to finish each other's musical sentence. It's really uncanny. There's so much unfolding so quickly that I'm gonna be stopping a lot and explaining what's going on so you can steal all that stuff. <laughs> That's a beautiful way to lead right into E. And that's a great answer. Or something like that. Almost parroting, but not Mickey Mousing. What I mean by Mickey Mouse, that's actually a film scoring term. It's like, you know, somebody's climbing up the stairs and it's like. <laughs> when you first start trading back and forth with somebody, if you've never done it before, a really good approach is to try and imitate exactly what they're doing. And that's going to help improve your ear. You're going to make a ton of mistakes. You're going to have some laughs, but you're going to really hit on some good stuff after some time. As you get more mature with this, you start to vary it a little bit. Like it'd be pretty easy for either of them to play exactly what each other is doing. But what they do is they vary it, which makes it interesting, not only for them two, but for all of us. Now, this is that sweet spot in between the third and the fourth pentatonic position. When you position your third finger on this D right here, you have the fourth pattern, which is right here. And the third pattern, which is right against it, of course. So Joe is directly in the middle of it doing his... Now notice the do that down down da down. Okay, don't quote me on that. So Joe introduces new melodic, like a new melodic idea right there, and then Eric takes it one step further and introduces something else. Now Joe goes into double stops. And bends right up to the third. Let's check that out. What's going on right there is Eric is thinking double time and again like I said in my what makes him so damn good video where I featured Eric he has so much church in him that it, it just makes sense that he's thinking double time over this 6-8 feel not only is he thinking double time 
Then he does. Which is right out of the Mixolydian scale. But of course he bends up to it. Then he goes straight up the minor pentatonic scale. And then... I love how Joe plays up the minor pentatonic scale. And then when he gets to this D, he does... It adds so much magic to what's going on there. It's very subtle, and those subtle things are all over this. Moving straight through all the pentatonic patterns from the fourth position all the way to the first position. What's he doing there? He's side slipping, so he's going and then he moves up a half step and then back down. Those aren't exactly the notes he's playing, but that's a very easy concept to take in and it adds tension to your playing. Now, why did Eric raise his hands like that? There's something about when Joe plays the ninth, which is this. So if you have the minor pentatonic scale. Eric just loves that. And that's not the only spot that he's elated when he hears that ninth. And he uses it in his playing too, by the way, a lot. Okay, okay, before we get to this section, this is great. Keep an eye on Joe. Joe's moving until he stops moving. And he stops moving because, because Eric lays this lick down that is so cool, you just gotta hear it. Keep an eye on Joe. <laughs> he just stops. His face stops and he's like, what the hell is that? If you haven't noticed, Eric plays lefty with his guitar strung upside down. That means he's going to have different physical advantages and maybe some disadvantages as opposed to the way we're playing. But that lick looks like this with the regular standard way of playing. <laughs> should mention that this is not the way to play blues guitar <laughs> it's the only way I could fit it into the frame for right now so just bear with me but when you're playing with your guitar a little bit lower it's a lot easier to have control over a lick like that as a matter of fact all of your blues licks this is not the characteristic blues angle <laughs> That is a really cool line that goes through a bunch of different positions using the ninth quite a bit actually. Switches the first position, second, third, fourth. Yeah, Eric should be throwing up his arms because that was killer. So Eric has also this extra gear that he can go into, this extra overdrive, where his double time is so blazingly fast. And I've seen him do that with Joe, where he just tops Joe by a considerable amount in terms of speed. Now, how is he doing it? In my opinion, Eric has a few things that are leaning towards his advantage. One is that when he is playing this way, which is descending for him because his guitar is strung backwards, he uses economy picking. But he doesn't just use economy picking, he also uses legato. If you take legato and you're using economy picking with it, you are just going to be able to fly. Now, Joe is mostly reliant on alternate picking with his right hand. Yes, he does do some pull-offs and he does intermix that, the, those two things, but when it comes to really laying it down and like, you know, putting the pedal to the metal, he alternate picks. And alternate picking can have a ceiling that is a little bit lower than economy plus legato. Oh, 
Okay, so this thing right here, that is a jazz cliche. And I can't remember what old song that comes from, but that was one of the things that was adopted from a melody into the jazz vernacular. So a lot of jazz licks come from songs of yesteryear. <laughs> That is just not imitatable. I mean, if you're going to try and learn that line, more power to you. It is very quirky and equally as cool. Okay, now right here, Joe shows us what to do when you hit a few bad notes. And that is you don't let it phase you at all and you just blast right through it. Let's check that out. He just stops and then and keeps going on. When you hit a few bad notes, just plow through and hit the right notes in time afterwards. And just like the old saying goes, you're as good as your last note, guaranteed that people are gonna remember your great notes after, they're not gonna remember that one or two clams that you hit. They're definitely having a conversation here and they're not doing this one-upsmanship stuff. One thing's for sure is that Joe is not phased at all with this crazy sheep that Eric pulls out. Now let's play that back for a second. There's so much great stuff in here that it really begs you to go back to this, play it over, listen to it, try and steal from it as much as you can. The, the sweet spot that I mentioned that Joe Bonamassa plays in, playing through all of the patterns, the listening, that's something that you can do with a friend. If you get together with a friend, you can ask them to play a blues lick and first try imitating exactly what they played back you will build your ears that way. And then as you get better, you will start to vary what it is that you've heard just by a little bit. And then you can actually have that musical conversation, just like your heroes. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I also hope you hit the notification bell and the subscribe button. It really is my honor to be able to teach you. So many of you that I have not met that I would like to meet someday and your support for this channel really means the world to me. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you on the next one.